I was just in a three hour Zoom meeting. That is egregious. I'm so sorry. About COVID <gasps> on the Even. film set. <gasps> Or lack of COVID on a film, or safety right. precautions. Yikes, yikes, it, yikes, yikes. Anyway, anyway, oh. America's getting back to work. Um, so uh, speaking of work, it's Watch Me Work, uh, my favorite part of the day. And I'm SLP, we've been doing the show for 11 years and three hours, no, I'm 11 years. And uh, we started in the lobby of the public theater. Um, with just a table, I had a typewriter and I figured that it would be good to show people what work looked like so that I could inspire them and encourage them. Uh, the public theater has been supporting us since jump and Howl Round came on three or so years ago to help us live stream from the public theater. And now they have come on board um, where we've been going full speed uh, for almost five months. I've been on hiatus from my film job for five months since the 13th of August. Um, so it's been great having you guys along with this journey. Um, and I hope we've done some good. So what we do, what we do is we work together for 20 minutes and then we talk about your work and your creative process. It's all about you for the next hour. And if you have a question, Audrey's gonna tell you how to ask it. Go Audrey. Thanks SLP. Um, so if you have a question and you're inside of the Zoom, all you need to do is click on the participant tab, likely at the bottom of your screen on a laptop or a top uh, on the top if you're, I tried to change the cadence and I messed myself up, uh, on, at the top if you're on an iPad or a tablet, if you click on the participant tab, uh, it'll open up a little box, you click the raise your hand button in that box, a little blue hand will pop up and I'll call on you if we've got time. Um, if you're watching on HowlRound.tv, you can tweet at us at, at WatchMeWorkSLP with the hashtag Howl round h-o-w-l-r-o-u-n-d um, and you can also tweet at the public theater at public theater ny uh, or you can write to the public theater's instagram and that's those are the ways those are the ways these are the days next 20 minutes here we go
All right. Here we All are. Right. Here we are. Here we are. Do we have a question? Not many questions right now? Oh, we can just keep working. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We've got two questions. All okay. right. Julia, you are up first. Hi. Hi, everybody. It's Hi. So to be here. Hi, SL. Hey. Um, I, the last couple of sessions we had, especially with our incredible guest last week, mm -hmm. uh, so many things sort of fell into place for me. Um, and, and I just, I wanted to, to thank you because um, there were things that I didn't kind of, I thought I understood that you were saying, but I didn't. Like, I thought when you said show up for the work, it, I was so grateful when you said, don't just write anything, like, like show up for the work that you're working on. Mm -hmm. um, and it was so helpful to me because I was, I kept getting kind of panicked about what I was working on. And so I thought, well, if I can't, I'll just write. And, um, and so I stopped doing that. And I also realized that one of the reasons, <laughs> one of the reasons why you said to use um, cards, index cards, wasn't just so that I could have them in a pile. Uh, <laughs> because I kept trying to do rewrites and I had like five or seven different things open on the laptop and I was getting so confused. And so I just, I, I realized I could do this. And, um, and I just, I wanted to say that um, for the last like four days, I have a first draft that's due on Friday, and I actually uh, am going to make it. And I went from being so distraught last week because it's autobiographical. And we, you know, one of the things that she had said about um, incorporate into your writing practice being you and observing you was incredibly helpful to me. And, and just, it seems like every single thing that you've said from last week until this week has been amazing. And, um, and, and I just, I wanted to thank you for that and, and say that um, I think that really, I don't actually get, every time I talk to you, I start crying. And I don't do this in my real life, but um, I think it's because of this that I actually am where I am. And I can't thank you enough. And I can't thank everybody in the group for this like intense 20 minutes of really supportive energy that just comes, just changes my whole apartment gets, is so alive with, with everybody's creativity. So that's it. That's all. <laughs> Yay. Thank you, Julia. We're so happy for you. We're really <laughs> happy for you. All right, up next we've got Laura. Are you unmuted, Laura? I'm gonna click again. How about now? Yeah. I there you go. Now. There we go. So yeah, so um, yeah, I just wanna actually um, uh, say the same thing that Julia just said about the energy. It's, it is so incredible to work with everyone in this. It, it, it is an amazing 20 minutes and you can feel the energy and it just carries you along. And, and I want to thank everybody for that as well. It's, it's really remarkable. Um, my question is a structural one as I continue to work on my memoir um, and I, uh, my guess is, well, anyway, let me just ask the question. So, um, so I go along in the story at the moment in a chronological manner. 
and it's told first person. Towards the end of the story of this portion of my life in this memoir, I actually do have journal entries because it was a very intense time. And so I started to actually insert actual journal entries. I mean, I slightly edited them, you know, but structurally, I haven't been doing it throughout. It's just all of a sudden at the end, I start adding them in. And, and I'm wondering if that's really copacetic or if I, I need to just take the journal entries and continue in the structure that I've been in. That's the, the, the question. How does it feel, Laura, when you read it? You know, I haven't actually read it aloud um, in that section yet. Mm -hmm. So maybe I should do that. I think the reason that I wanted to do that is there was an immediacy from that time, because th this time period was 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so when I reread those journal entries, I just thought to myself, there's such a power in that. There's such an authenticity in it that I didn't want to change it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not suggesting that you do. I just was asking you how it felt. Yeah. No, I'm yeah. not suggesting that you change it at all. It sounds fine to me. I mean, yeah, there, uh, yeah I, I think uh, for me personally, that what I always think of, if it, if it, if in literature and art, if it feels cool, it doesn't have to adhere to any rule that one might have, that one might pick up in some kind of an academic program or mm. from a teacher on the, you know, I, I, I'm not one of those kind of artists, you know? Yeah. So yeah. if you're feeling it in the groove, maybe you're, 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 you're doing something that hasn't been done before, or at least you're doing something that you haven't done before. And, mm -hmm. but if it feels like it could work, it's worth trying. Okay. Thank so, you. Yeah. 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 Sounds cool. Sounds really Thank cool. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Mm -hmm. sure. All right. Thank you. Um, all right, up next, we've got John. Are you there, John? Oh. Hi. Hi. Hi, SOP. Um, SOP, I have a question about my writing style. Uh, I want to thank you, first of all, because I um, did your thing with coming to the screen every day. I've cranked out a webinar. Um, I talked to each page and says, what is it do I want to do? I've even done the dancing thing. I'm an old Motown fan, so I, uh, I'm fond of the four tops, and that kind of gets me started before I get writing. Um, I'm, uh, the, the problem with my writing, if I see it, is this. I had somebody who go through it with me and read all my writing and said, you've got a lot of good stuff going on here, but you need to make your writing more conversational. I tend to be, in, in Spanish, it's called a tumba borros, which is a burro. If you're a burro in the Spanish language, you're dumb. The tumba burro is the guy that carries his dictionaries around one on top of the other. And they're so heavy, they knock the burrow down. I tend to talk like that. I tend to converse like that. And I, it, it sees into my writing. So can you give me any ideas as far as how to um, go back, look at my writing again and again, and make it more conversational? Because I don't want to sound like that school marm with her, her hair tied back in a bun and that type of thing. Um, so how could I, what could I do to make my writing more conversational, more loose and not reflecting the, the education that I have, if that makes any sense? Sure, sure. I mean, John, the way you were talking just now did not sound like a school mom with their hair tied back. It sounded like, you know, someone with their hair down. No, I mean, <laughs> your regular talk, just right now, you sounded very conversational. I and I, you know, you've asked questions on several occasions. I do not recall you using um, a vocabulary that was not suited to the, the question that you had or the point you were trying to make. So I think you're very judicious in your use of language. What you can do though, since you like the four tops, since you like to dance, right? Get up and, and read your things aloud. Have you, have you, do you read your things aloud on your feet? Huh? See how it moves. If something sounds a little like, eh, 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 like, or, Ooh, I'm trying to impress somebody there with my vocabulary. That's probably a way, a place to trim or reshape 
but you want your you want your language to move if you appreciate that person's uh, feedback then then get on your feet and walk around dance it dance around with your pages you know does that sound like fun yeah that that sounds like what i need to do because i want to I don't want to be the school mom. I'd rather be the nut dancing around. Yeah, there you go. So you, you are, you, well, John, I tell you, you are the nut dancing around. <laughs> you just need to, just <laughs> lean into it, brother. Lean into it. Give over to it. You know, have some fun. Okay. Okay. Thank you, SLP. Sure. sure. Thanks, John. Thanks, SLP. Thanks, John. Um, all right. Up next is Danielle. Hey there, Danielle. Hi. Hey, SLP. Thank you so much for this space. Um, so my question is about, I think Brene Brown calls this a vulnerability hangover. Um, it's, I like that term and it, I had one this week and I just wanted to sort of ask your advice. So basically um, I'm working on a pilot for something that is quite autobiographical and personal. It seems like that's a theme today. And um, I'm part of a writer's group. So we're sort of bringing pages every week which is great and so motivating and I'm so grateful for it. But um, last time I shared pages, like these are people who knew me from way back when and it felt so uh, like exposing, just like showing them my intestines <laughs> and, um, and like not particularly motivating in a way. Like I, I felt like I, I was, it was hard to sort of stay in myself and my own perspective. And I was sort of like in their perspective judging it. And it's like so early, it's first draft. So I'm just wondering like, basically like, does that mean I shouldn't share the work? Does it mean that like, it's great. It's like, I'm it's keep going. Or like, I just get curious to hear your sort of thoughts about that. Jeez, yeah, that's a tough, um, uh, I, it's kind of the re reverse of what I said to Laura, or, or maybe it's the same thing. If it feels, eh, and it doesn't make you feel like, yeah, I can go back to the page, mm -hmm. you know, um, then I would say slow down your sharing, mm -hmm. you know, which doesn't mean that you don't appreciate your, your writing group, which doesn't mean that they don't give great feedback. It means that the process for you and what you're writing needs to be on a slower share, right? Yeah. And so maybe um, every, I don't know, what do you, every week you share or every, yeah. yeah, so maybe every once a month you share, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you only, you know, you only share a little bit if you are relying on their feedback to encourage you. I, I don't know. I mean, do you feel kind of motivated? I think the deadlines are encouraging, like knowing that there's a place to bring pages is encouraging, but I could probably stick <clears throat> to those goals without necessarily sharing everything. Yes. That yeah, that's it. That's exactly right, Danielle. You, you make the goal, you stick to the goals, make those finish lines and don't share. Awesome just hold it close. That's all. I mean, it's not don't share, you know, it sounds me, yeah, but yeah. just hold it close. You know what I mean? Um, deliver the baby when it's due or however, whatever metaphor that works, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then gradually, maybe if you have, you know, three pages or five pages to share and it's been a month, you'll build up your stamina for the sharing, which is what actually you're working on. Mm -hmm. Sounds like the writing is, is going well and it will continue to go well if you protect it and, um, work on the bound, the other boundaries, mm -hmm. the boundaries that you have to work on. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. And you can tell your writing group that too. Yeah. You know, you can say, you can say how much you appreciate them and all that and say, I just need to go a little more slowly. And then they'll really love you actually, you know, they'll be like, all right, we're going to support her that way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Gives more time yeah. for other people to read too. Yeah, that's <laughs> Side that's best. True. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, Danielle. Um, all right, up next we've got Jim. Hi, uh, first of can you hear me? I have a fan on. Yeah. I can hear you. You have your fan club, yeah. Uh, uh, an aside to John, uh, for my senior prom, my very small school rented a section of the Latin Casino in South Jersey to see the Four Tops. And it was one of the great concerts I have ever seen. So eat your heart out. Uh, this is somewhat appropriate because this is a musical question, but it might also be a technical question. As I said, I've written the draft of a seven scene play 
three of the four characters are performers in a retirement home for retired performers. They break out in song often. I hear that I'm not a musician and you are. I've both seen you perform and heard songs in your plays that are sometimes very different from the type of stuff you perform in your band. But this might be a question other people know either or an answer, a technical one. Are there things like computer programs? I know a few weeks ago, you mentioned you frequently will sing a riff into your phone. And I could do that because like I say, and, and they're very short, simple, Mary had, you know, Mary had a little lamb type of things. These are not sophisticated things. But even those of you who are parents might know that if, if there's some sort of computer program where you teach young kids music that might help this very old kid get those musical and like I say, they're just riffs or phrases or motifs. So, so I can just get them out and down there so that beyond my head, and if this ever goes into a production phase, I can help those people know what I mean. I, I wonder, Jim, if um, and I think doing your phone, I mean, this is my take on it. using your phone right now, if that is easy for you, is the best thing to do because it's probably the most familiar device you would have today. You know what I mean? And then you would be using the voice memo thing on your phone and perhaps learning how to use a, a computer program. I mean, there are lots of them. There's, uh, do you play um, a keyboard or you have a little keyboard or? I do not. And I'm old enough that when I was in grade school, yeah. we had to learn the very rudiments of, oh. of reading music. Oh, very so good. I think I can revive that, but it's... But it's, it's, it's no, it's totally talking, possible. I'm, I'm going to be 69 next month, so we're yeah. talking a while ago. Yeah. No, but so. Jim, it's totally possible. This is what you do. You can record the, the tune, the riff, the bit in your phone, right? Okay, that's 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 easy. And then you can do a couple of different things. One, you can outsource it. You can hand it off to a friend who uh, can write music and you can have them transcribe it if they do something, they have a program like Finale or something. You just basically you play it off a MIDI keyboard into your computer and it makes the notes. Here's the great thing about music. You don't need to be able to read, even though you do read music, you don't need to be able to read music to write music. That's the thing. You, I mean, musical notation, yes, but you can write a song without reading music. Aretha Franklin did it. Paul Lennon and McCartney did it. So, you know, great songwriters, right? Um, sure, it's nice if you can, but you don't have to be able to. So I would say record it in your phone and then you can hand it off to a, a friend. You probably know somebody who, can, who is, you know, deft at that kind of thing. And if you don't, you can just have voice recordings. So when your play goes into production, you can play that for the actors and they can learn it off of your phone. OK, so it doesn't have it doesn't have to be complicated in the script. You can notate, you know, they sing the C voice memo and date it. And then you can also text the voice memo to yourself or to your email so you can have a copy of it, you know, so it's super easy. Um, for you. <laughs> no, no, no. Just like sing it. La, 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 la. Like that. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks, Jim. Um, all right. We don't have a question at the moment. Just double checking Twitter. Sound like you were going to say but. But. But I was like, but. Uh, I'm going to bet I'm going to check Twitter. Uh, it does not seem that we have a Twitter question at the moment. Okay. Oh, we got a question from Crystal. Okay. How you doing, girl? Hi. <laughs> How are you? Good. How are you doing? Um, today is a little bit of a a, a little bit of a low day. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. I I have to 
I think I told you I was going to come with a different question regarding the Father Chronicles, mm -hmm. um, because um, I'm trying to meet a deadline for um, that's at the I think at the end of this week actually for a play mm -hmm. festival. Um, so, okay, so someone used the term vulnerability hang hang hangover, and I uh, feel like okay, that's yeah, yeah. kind of yeah yeah, and. Um, and as I've been reading through, I've been, I've noticed that, okay, when I wrote this, this was, when I started writing this, I had just lost my father and we have very, very complicated relationship. And um, as I'm reading through and reading through, it's like, oh, ouch, that kind of burns, you know, like, mm -hmm. oh, that stings. Oh, that's, um, that's a lot. And I feel like I want to share it, you know. Um, I think I'm I'm having trouble with reasoning and how I revise because um, I think stuff still hurts. And mm -hmm. so, where I was going with, um, sorry, um, ooh, okay, where I was going with the demagogue, it was required of me. It was and an and ask and a set structure and where um with this it's a lot more um it's lot, a lot more my heart there for everybody to see and i'm okay to share that i'm fine to, to share that i think i'm just trying to figure out how to um how to revise in a way that's still practical or not as emotional, um, I don't know if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, we can't, yeah. Um, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, so this is what happens when I write like this particular piece, there's no, there's no room for filter. There's like no room for any kind of strainer to like, to hold back. There's no room for it. There's no opportunity to. And so I feel like I can't take, I want, I want people to feel, I want people to feel what I'm writing and I want them to see the good, the bad, the ugly, the hurt, the forgiveness, the non-forgiveness, the the closure and the non-closure. But I I don't want to I don't want to write like a like like a teenager who's just emoting and just I don't want to write like a, I don't know I guess I don't want it to seem like it's just a journal entry. I mean there are scenes and there are monologues and there's a beginning, middle, and end to every piece. Um, I just think that every part of it that's been written has been um, very much on the line of of how it's been my morning. It's been it's been how I've been processing my morning, and I know it's not fully finished, but I wanted to take a portion of it and submit it, you know, a portion of it and call it a short version and submit it as a short play, um, because I don't I don't think it's meant to. I don't think all of this trial and tribulation of writing this is meant to be just stay in the computer. Mm -hmm. So yeah. when's the, when's the, when do you have to turn it in, Crystal? By the 17th. Which is what day? I think Monday. So turn it in, Crystal. <laughs> turn it in. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can even write like a, like a little, you know, I mean, do you have to submit an artist statement with it or could you? I, I, I you could, you could, you could, you could say, you, or, or, or a, a, a letter, you know, like a, a, an email to accompany the piece. You're just going to turn it in or you're going to like, hi, my I was just going to go here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, you can, you can, I mean, you can read through it and edit and as you can. But I don't think by Monday or whenever the, it's due, you need to really 
you know, trouble yourself getting it to like finished, you know? You can write in an email or a cover letter, this is still raw, you know? I'm writing about my dad or my relationship with my father. Just like you said, we had a complicated relationship. I want people to see the good, the bad, the forgiveness, the, all those things you just said to us, right? It's, it's not there yet, but I'd love to get an opportunity to work on it with your organization or whatever. You see what I mean? Yeah. I mean, there are lots of plays that are submitted <clears throat> that need work, you know, that need, that, that will really benefit from a workshop process. And your play is one of them. And I think just being honest and telling them where you're at you know, the, what I'm saying is if it did not feel good, submit it right now, then I would say don't submit it. But since you feel like it would be helpful to you, then I think you should submit it. Okay. You, you see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and don't worry about getting it like, you know, perfect. Is there, is there... When I guess when something is so personal, like very, very, very personal, is there how do how do how do you approach how do you approach the continual process of I, I haven't written anything this personal because this hasn't happened to me before. So I feel like the way I approach it is is very different from any other piece that I've worked on. Is there like a a certain way that I should approach it just whatever the process may be going forward other than you know vomiting everything that's going from heart to tears to paper yeah sure I mean it's going to take time you know you're going to you're going to need time to get some perspective on it right and you need more compassion for yourself than you probably would if you're writing just some, you know, work for hire that didn't have anything to do with you. Do you does that make sense? You know? So when you find yourself apologizing for feeling whatever you're feeling, you know, go, hey, I'm allowed to feel things. When you find yourself feeling whatever it is you're feeling, you're allowed to have your feelings and you're allowed to struggle with them and all that. Does that make sense? You just need more compassion when it's closer to home, right? Yeah. Does that make sense? You're, you're... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I mean, no. Just... It's a lot. It's a lot. But I think it's really great that you, I mean, come on. This week has been a great week for you. You got no. one turned in. You're getting another one turned in on Monday. And, no. and you're really wrestling with some big things. I know. I just, I guess I didn't expect today to be one of those days to kind of sneak up on me. Mm -hmm. you know because I did have a really great day I had a great weekend and so it just feels like why you know why when I turn to this piece that it just it brings out a lot of uh, it's just over it's overwhelmingly overwhelming mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um and and I still want to feel like I'm a writer like I'm still a writer like I still have it to <laughs> together, mm -hmm. um, but it feels like I'm, you know, like when you're like with actors, when they're acting and sometimes they touch a nerve and you kind of get concerned for them. You wonder if they're, if they touch a place that's not really safe emotionally and they're kind of harping mm -hmm. on that. And so you kind of see them bleeding a mm -hmm. little bit and it mm -hmm. doesn't feel safe anymore as the audience member. Like, I wonder, I wonder if that shows in my writing that it, that it's like, we're touching things and, oh, like this writer's, she's not safe or she's, she's, she's on that line. She's on that line. Mm -hmm. Maybe. I mean, I, you know, what, what do you want me to tell you to stop? <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the club crystal <laughs> you know we that's why we work we that's why we show up and that's why we're consistent we rely on our craft and our faith and our community to keep us going 
And yeah, so you're exposing some ner raw nerves. Welcome to the club. Keep going. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. I mean, yeah, take care. That's why I said, you know, double dose of compassion for yourself. You know, take care of yourself. Do something nice for yourself today that doesn't have anything to do with getting your work done. Oh, okay. Mom. Oh. Mom. <laughs> Mom. Okay, yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, eat some. Look, somebody said, eat some ice cream. There you go. Eat some ice cream. And I have or, ice cream. Oh, there you I go. Think. Have, a, have a, some, a little bit of ice cream. You know, take a bubble bath. Do something. Go outside and twirl around. I don't know. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. Be grateful to the play. You wrote it. You know, you're not sitting there going, I'm constipated creatively, you know? Yeah. Right. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's very really true. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll eat ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Crystal. Enjoy the ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got about five minutes left, and we're going to go to Lorelei. Hi, SLP. Hey, uh, Lorelai. Uh, Crystal, I just admired everything you just said, and um, I'm wishing you strength for this difficult time. Um, I, my dog is, uh, she hears me speaking and she's like, oh, what are we doing? <laughs> um, so uh, I, the last, you know, couple weeks I've been on Watch Me Work, I've just been doing research and reading but I opened up my draft today um, to work on it. And I noticed that it says uh, draft date 6 20 And I just, I was like, man, I haven't written in this thing for two months. And um, I, oh, <laughs> um, and I, um, and it's just, how do you, how do you move forward with, um, with, I mean, it, it's done, it's a full draft, but it's just how do you move forward um, with something that you feel like I've, I've been working on this thing for over a year, two years, two, a year and a half maybe. Um, and, it's, and it's done, and I, but it's not ready. And I, I need to figure out how to go back into it, but I don't, I don't know how to leap back in because I'm feeling so stuck and unmotivated. Mm -hmm. It's a great question. So you have a full draft and you yeah. haven't looked at it in, in almost two months. Is that, is that correct? Correct. Okay. So you want to, what's great about it is you can, you have a full draft and you're going to be able to read it hopefully as if someone else wrote it. Yeah. Right. Cause you were a different person two months ago. Right. So you're going to get that perspective. You're going to get that, you know, you're going to get, a, you've gotten a little distance on it. You've created that for yourself. And now you're going to read it as if someone else wrote it. And you can do a couple of things. You can, um, I would suggest reading it out loud, standing up. Okay. Okay. Because, you, you know, out loud, standing up. Yeah. Okay. So um, I would also suggest, I'm guessing that you, have you printed it out? Have you had an opportunity to print it out? I haven't. My printer software is all messed up and I haven't gotten oh, it. Oh, yucky. Yeah. Yucky. Um, if you can, before you read it, I would say print it out. Just get yeah. some distance from the machine, you yeah. know. Um, if you can, print it out and then, or maybe send it to a friend or, you know, a COVID safe friend or a friend in your pod or your bubble mm -hmm. and, and um, print it out. Go to Staples, whatever, however you can do it. Yeah. I print it out. And then, then you have pages, which is a different, it's, I'm, I'm trying to um, encourage you to do something different with your body than you probably were doing when you wrote it. Yeah. So you're going to be standing, energy's different. You're going to be holding it in your hand. That's a different thing, turning pages like this, actual pages. And you're going to be using your, ah, right? Right. To read it out loud. Okay. Um, and that can give you a sense of like, you know, what, what, how's it feeling? You know? Um, you can have a pen in hand when you read and circle places that are a little draggy and not quite there, you know, but yeah. you can put smiley faces on the, in the margins of the place that are really clicking for you. Yeah. You know? Okay. 
and just do that and you know do it if you can in one uh, writing period yeah um but if you can't you know divide it up um you can do one scene what you know a scene a day or i don't know the, what it is is it a play or a... it's a uh film okay okay so you can do you know 20 pages a day if you want to take it slow or you can do it all in once in one standing sure yeah. yeah it's tricky because i i know what needs to be done i know I mean, the plot is good. It's it's all formed out. It's all fleshed out. It's good, but uh -huh. and I don't need any new characters. In fact, I think I'm going to cut one, not a not a very important one. Um, that would be a huge change. But um, it's like I know what I need to do to certain characters, but I'm just worried about length. Um, to what do you mean? Too long? Too short? Too long. Um, How many pages is it? 139. Okay, so don't worry about length until it's time to worry about length. Okay, it's not time to worry about length yet. Yeah, I remember now. I remember. I remember you asked a question a couple of months ago, and I was like, I cannot remember Lorelai's question. And you were, you also asked about length. Length. Was it yeah. When Tony was on. Yeah. Yeah, Kushner. Ha! You asked Kushner about length. Ha -ha! I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did. Or, you know, don't worry about length. I know, that's um, what he said. He's like, you're yeah, fine. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah, really, don't uh, don't even worry about length. I mean, you know, and I've even had Hollywood directors say, don't worry about, why are you worried about length? Just write it, just write the characters. Yeah. Um, so um, go ahead and write it. You can trim later. You can, you know, do what you got to do to it. And then once you put everything in there that you need and cut the character that you need to cut and all that, then you can read it again for length and think, yeah. Okay, how can I, you know, aside from using the tricks in the whatever program you're using, Final Draft, for example, there yeah. are a lot of tricks yeah. you can do to get more lines on the page. But aside from that, you can think, how can I economize? But this is not the draft to do that. Okay. Okay? Yeah. But definitely read it out loud, especially if it's a film, you know? Yeah. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. It's six o'clock. It's six o'clock. It's six o'clock. Yay! Right. Yay! Okay. Well, you know the drill, everybody. Sign up by 3 p.m. Eastern every single day that we are here. <laughs> and I'll send you right. a link between 3 and 4 30 p.m. <laughs> and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Okay. Bye. Thanks, SLP. Bye, bye. Thank you. Thanks, Audrey. Thanks, everybody. Great to see you. Great questions. Bye. Bye.